10 minutes is all it takes to learn if you're overpaying and by how much. Almost 2 million people have already saved money with AIG Auto Insurance. On average, they keep an extra $349.88 in their pockets. And they have the benefits of AIG Security Advantage, absolutely free. That includes free roadside assistance, free identity theft restoration services, and free emergency travel and medical assistance. Call and ask for a free rate quote today. Call now before you overpay a penny more. Call 1-800-511-1236. That's 1-800-511-1236. Or visit AIGauto.com. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Quick. If you're a high school football fan, then you've got to turn to MSG Tuesday night for the New York, New Jersey All-Star Classic. Oh, the room of the world for Ray Rice, and he brings it. Heisman candidate Ray Rice, Penn State's Eric McCoo, and Virginia's Wally Lundy are just some of this great game's alumni. An incredible 48 players between the two squads this year are headed to Division I programs. The New York, New Jersey All-Star Classic. Don't miss the stars of the future. Tuesday night at 7 on MSG. Well, down 2-1, West Islip scores five goals in that second quarter. That's the difference in this game as they lead by three. And Eamon McEnany, you talk about the Bryan halftime highlights. The Lions really got it going in that second quarter. It took them a while. West Genesee had a 2-1 lead, but then the Lions went on a five-goal run, and it started with Nicky Galasso, the rookie, the freshman no more, right, as he finds the scene, takes the pass, and puts in the easy one off the transition, the pass from Justin Turry. Then the senior, Brian Caulfield, with the fake, goes back, no slide, ready to come, and he beats Galloway. He has two goals. It's 4-2. It was 6-2, but then the Wildcats got back in it as Brian Donahue takes the feed, holds off the check from Spezial, moves in closer and beats the CCO. That made it 6-3, and that's our score after 24 minutes of action. Two quarters worth of stats in this one. The Max Preps, first half stats. You look at the shots, you look at the turnovers, maybe that, the turnover kind of jumps out for West Jennings. That's absolutely what jumps out at me when you see that. Not, 10 turnovers leading to 19 shots. Ground balls or even face-offs are close. Turnovers is big. That's not West Genesee's style. So you sure, I'm sure Coach Messer said, let's tighten things up on offense. There are two quarters left for the right to call yourself a New York State Class A champion. Lock and load, baby. The third quarter of the Pontiac High School Locks Game of the Week, presented by Warrior, is straight ahead. Here comes New York, trying to go coast to coast. Gets it to go. What a play by the Liberty. You can't shake me. Our country has come face to face with some real problems. Have you ever wanted to make a difference? Now you can. Gibbs offers education that can prepare you for a career in criminal justice. You could work in private security, corrections, or law enforcement. This could be your chance to make America a better place. Call now and find out how you can get started in our criminal justice program. For a brochure, call 888-257-6601. That's 888-257-6601. Call now. Here's your score, West Islip with a 6-3 lead as they try to defend their championship on the Pontiac High School Lacks Game of the Week presented by who else? Warrior, the presenting sponsor of the lacrosse game of the week is Warrior. Warrior Lacrosse is revolutionizing the game through equipment, technology, and innovation since 1992. Warrior Lacrosse, the means to dominate. It was a big year for Albany Lacrosse. It's been a big day for some future great days. Their head coach is with Maggie Gray. 
Thanks. I'm here with Scott Moore, the head coach of the University of Albany. Not many coaches can boast that they have five players playing in the Class A championship game that are going to be going to their school. Yeah. Exciting for the program. What a coup. Oh, no question. Uh, you know, these guys have been tremendous players, uh, you know, for, for the past year for these teams and for them to get to the state final is awesome. But to see five kids coming to the great days next year, we couldn't be happier. Yeah, we could sit here and talk about all of them, but let's just talk about one. You said we all know what Brian Caulfield can do. He's already doing it out there today. You said you thought Mike Finnegan was actually the real unsung sung hero and the sleeper of these five players. Yeah, there's no question. Mike's a big, strong athlete. You know, came to us kind of late in the process and, uh, you know, came up to school, really enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, we're real happy again to have four of these kids from West Lysa coming up and Jenny as well. Just a winning tradition and keeping it rolling. Coach, good luck next year. You know, we know you got a lot of talent. Jimmy, back to you. Thank you very much. Eamon, you were loving that new balance pullover <laughs> coach was wearing, huh? I, I got to I gotta find Coach Moore before this thing's over, see if he's got any extra in the car. But, you know, had to be tough night, uh, emotionally torn night for Scotty Moore watching uh, West Islip go up against his alma mater, Yorktown. Yorktown coached by his brother, Dave Moore. And, uh, you know, he loves his alma mater. Cornhuskers, they say, when you cut them open, they, green, they bleed green. So an emotional night for him seeing some future players. Vinny Galasso in by himself and another pipe for West Iceland. Oh, it's becoming an underlying theme of this game now, Matt. I think you got to give that one to Galloway, Jimmy. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think he got a piece of that one. I, I think we'll give that one a save. As we see Galasso bearing in, gets the shot off, moves it to his right, off the helmet. Right. Yeah, so anything oh. helps, right? Oh, so the last one I said was off his mask, was off the pipe. This one I said is off the pipe, is off his mask. West Lysa, though, will retain possession now. Bradish. Here's Ian, takes a look. He had a big first half. Bradish now turns and fires, never gets there. Now Justin Turry. And this is Caulfield, the aforementioned. Caulfield. He'll reset up top to Justin Turry. A spectacular southpaw. You know, he looks to get to that left hand and fire. Here he comes. Turry in all alone over the top. Backed up nicely. Back over to Turry. Little give and go. Turry protects. It'll keep it on his stick. Now here's Bradish. Explodes to the left side. Bradish in. Shot in the save that time. And Callaway is holding his ground here to start this third quarter. He's starting the second half the way he started the first half. Playing well and getting a good bead on the shots, a good read. Got a little bounce in his step. But West Islip holds on to the ball. He must feel like he's in a shooting gallery in this one. Here's Caulfield now. Caulfield drives to his left, turns it back inside. Up top he goes. Justin Turry with a big shot, but right into the stick of the keeper. But they can't clear it. They lose the ground ball and they go back to work. And on the inside, score. a goal. Eddie Plompin from Nicky Galasso and the relentless pursuit around the keeper pays off for West Islip. They are in the shirt of John Galloway. That's a heartbreaker for Galloway. You make three great saves on one possession and then you can't corral the loose ball. It's like giving up an offensive rebound in basketball. Uh, he just can't hold on to it. It bounces past Casey and Galasso goes to work with a great feed in tight to Eddie Plompin. That's just a tough turn of events for West Genesee. Galloway playing great, making the three saves, but they were unable to hold on to possession and clear the ball, and it's West Islip cashing in with the goal. Just great poise that time, though, by the freshman, Nicky Galasso. Nice, soft little touch pass on the interior. Here comes West Jenny now. They trail by four once again. Jimmy, so many college coaches here. What do you think the mail's going to be like for Nicky Galasso the next couple of years? Colin Donahue turns and fires, and it goes wide. So Donahue, next stop for him is Rutgers. He's been quiet. A good job by the defense. Hogan, Flanagan, McCormick. Yeah, they really spread the production around in West Genesee country. Now Joe Pompo. Speaking of Albany, it's Pompo taking away nicely. Great double team by West Islip. And they'll pick up the ground ball nicely. Good stick work finally picked up. By McCormick, but a giveaway. I got to see what the call is here. It's a penalty. It's a one minute. On a slash, it looks like. Very late. And the slash is going to go against Joe Popo. 
Here's yep. Pompo. They lose the ball. He goes for the swim move. Great defense by Bradish to stand him up. Flanagan comes in. There's the slash right there. It just took him a while. Oh, I got you. So they threw the flag right away. Okay. It was West Iceland possession. That's why I thought it was a late call. Obviously, I just didn't see the flag. So a good call. Excellent call. It's a slash any day of the week. Oh, absolutely. Here's West Iceland now. Big opportunity now for them to pump the lead to five with a full minute. Now Turry will swing it over to Vinny Galasso. Back they go to Caulfield. Caulfield will survey, looking for a cutter on the inside, and an errant pass will go out of bounds. That's a tough, unforced turnover because a goal there on that extra man could have been a nail in the coffin. I think West Genesee dodges a bullet now, maybe only momentarily, but they get the ball, chance to run out the clock on this man down and keep it a four-goal spread. So Mike Masser hasn't seen his team hit their stride. A game here today, but a lot of time to go in this one. Ball hits the ground. Turnover, West Iceland now looking to get in transition. Good job by Spezial backing things up, and he'll give him another look. That's just really inexcusable. It's just a simple cross-field pass. You need possessions. You need to work the clock and get all even, and you give it right back to him. We talked about the turnover differential at halftime, and that's pretty much the same old game here. Now Caulfield. Jumps back in. Brian Caulfield tries to get a pass up over the top. Intercepted beautifully by Jeremy Plotsko, the senior mini. Here come the Wildcats now on the run. It's Plotsko taking a look. Turns back to his right. Plotsko spins back. Drops it off to the trailer. Waddick. And now Waddick will settle. Good job by Caulfield to hustle back in the hole and keep it a slow break. Barber now frees up his left hand. Quick shot, never gets there. The rebound is picked up by Kevin Wada. He's got a man on the doorstep. Oh, DeCicio came up huge. Matching sticks on the doorstep. We got a push call against West Islip. A great save. That's one of those that you can circle and say it was a momentum changer because it keeps it a 7-3 ball game when it very easily could have been 7-4. A great pass. Right on top of the crease, but DeCicio gets up and denies Adam Mazzoni. And then the push afterwards on Flanagan keeps it West Genesee ball. So Waddick now and West Jenny, they could use a goal here. Here's Ryan Barber going to his right. Drops it back up top to Waddick. Waddick. To the inside, Waddock's got some rooms, goes to the left hand, it's DeCicio again. Big save, and out come the lines of West Iceland. Drew DeCicio is setting the tone. On the run now, Tyler Turry. Turry to the doorstep, Nicky Galasso to the back of the net. End-to-end -end action by your Lions of West Islip, and they lead by five. It's a two-goal swing, Jimmy, and it's the Pontiac the game, and it starts at the other end with the senior, Drew DeCicio, who is playing a great game. Waddick moves in, goes to the left, but the CCO meets him, so then we're going the other way. Great speed by Tyler Turry. He's out in the open field, and then he moves it. Galasso finishes. End-to-end -end action. The Pontiac drive of the game makes it 8-3 when it very easily could have been 7-4. Galasso's second of the game. Well, off the faceoff, here comes Wes Jenny. Oh, big stick check on the stick of John Jiglia, the junior defender. He stopped an imminent fast break there by West Genesee. It's the little plays that really show up at the end of the day, and Jiglia just made a good little one there. Now breaking in the other way. What a spin move by Flanagan. <laughs> oh. And it's a flag down, free possession. The Wildcats offside, so the Lions get to go to work. A free possession for West Islip. Here's Caulfield now. Hey. You got to think Caulfield go a little one-on-one -on -one here. See what we're going to do. Matched up with Luke Cometti. Well, they're going to double the ball because they're playing with the extra man anyway. Here comes Caulfield now with a rush. Taking on two Lions, two Warriors. Wildcats, I should say. I'll get it, eh? And the whistle will blow. 
quickly we check in with Maggie Gray. Thanks, Jimmy. Well, I was talking to Nikki Galasso yesterday. He said, you know, he's learned so much this year, not just from his four brothers, but also from Justin Terry, from Brian Caulfield, from these great seniors at West Islip. He also said he knows he's ready to inherit this team. He said he and Andrew Hodgson, they are the future. As soon as these seniors leave, he only hopes to emulate what they've shown him and, and take something from their book and, and hopefully another state championship. Guys, back to you. Man, no doubt he has a chance to become maybe the greatest ever. And that's only because of his production at such this young age. That's why they call them programs. And you see guys growing up wanting to emulate their older brothers, their older cousins, the guys they see. They start playing at the youth level and they expect to win. And they know what the standard is. So West Islip now salivating on offense. Here's Justin Turry, quick pass on the interior. And turning and firing just over the goal is Waybill. Ryan Waybill has brought that extra gear today to the state championship. He is getting after it. Penalty over, we're all even. Back up top to go to Justin Terry. Five goals is the lead for West Islip, the Lions. Good possession right here. This is what West Islip specializes in, possession of the ball. They will just wear you down. Five minutes to go now in the third quarter of this Class A final. Pulling it out is Bradish. Now Turk. Let's see what JT has in store. Matched up with Benny Waldron. He'll go behind to Nicky Galasso. The lasso now goes to work. Nikki has the ball taken away nicely. By the defender, big effort right there by Jared Casey. It's a turnover, West Jenny desperately needed. Now, good check in right here by Vinny Galasso, but West Jenny will keep the ball. Failure to advance there, it looks like. They're Fred, trying to get a timeout call, but there we go. Oh, they go to work right away, but a little too rushed. They credit Vinny Galasso. Good work right there. But West Islip will throw it away. That's why you hear coaches talk about attackmen who are complete players. Riding is such a part of the game. You know, we, Matt Donowski, the best player in the country, is also a great rider. He just doesn't score and, you know, look for the glory. He knows that riding's part of the game at Duke and... You know, you see the attackman here he really can, can create easy opportunities. Aaron Print up now. Bull Rub dodging his way in. Look at Print up trying to set a tone and a goal. That's just what the doctor ordered for the Wildcats of West Jenny. Aaron Print up had a goal on his mind and nothing would stop him. If you look up the word determined in the dictionary, you can run this tape. I mean, take a look at it at full speed. This is someone who wants to make something happen. Lowering the shoulder, overpowering. I'm not going to be stopped by a double team. Bring a third guy. I'm on my way to the cage. I'm on my way to getting my team back in it. It's 8-4. Aaron Printup trying to wake up the Wildcats. We'll be right back on MSG. The name you've known for 50 years is introducing a new member to the Garden State Brickface family. Premium vinyl siding for your home. How good is our vinyl siding? You can see that Garden State Brick Face's premium vinyl siding can take the toughest abuse that Mother Nature or your kids can dish out. It continues to look this beautiful, and we guarantee it for a lifetime. Call now for details on how Garden State Brick Face windows and siding can help beautify and protect your home. The name you've known for 50 years is introducing a new member to the Garden State Brick Face family. Premium vinyl siding for your home. Why travel to the home mega store when Garden State Brickface offers a free in-home design consultation? Once you've selected a design, the skilled craftsman of Garden State Brickface will complete the job exactly the way you want it. Garden State Brickface premium vinyl siding can really take the toughest abuse. It continues to look this beautiful and we guarantee it for a lifetime. Call now for details on how Garden State Brickface windows and siding can help beautify and protect your home. There's your score, 8-4. West Cheney with a big goal there a moment ago. Really keeps him around in this one. 3.48 to go in the third quarter on the last day of the lacrosse season on MSG. Hey, we want to let everybody know the game brought to you in conjunction with New York State Public High School Athletic Association. 
And of course, when we turn the page this year, we'll go to football in the fall, Sunday, September 9th at 10 a.m. It's Will Hill and St. Peter's Prep. He won it as a sophomore. He lost it as a junior. What, a, what does his senior season have in store? Taking on the green wave of Del Barton. Will Thrill Hill will be out in his new balance in 07 on the football field. The Snapple game of the week coming your way in September. Big ground ball in the face off for the Wildcats as their fans are sensing the urgency. They're like, let's go, fellas. We're down by four. Still plenty of time in this one. Over three minutes. Here's Aaron Pruta. Drops it off to Joe Pompo. And Pompo in deep pulls it back out in the reset. Colin Donahue now. If the momentum from Printup's goal can carry over now, if they can stick another one, West Genesee. Driving the cage nicely here. Mazzoni looking, dishes off. Here's one out up top, not handled by Basicio. And coming the other way is West Iceland. On the move is Caulfield, drops it off for the trailer, push from behind, here comes the flag. It's a tough break for West Genesee. They had some good ball movement. It looked like they got a good opportunity. Tim Bezio, number nine, couldn't get the shot off, couldn't handle the call field in the right place at the right time. Here it is, the ball movement, then the skip pass right down the middle. We're ready for a crank, but he can't hang on. Field with a clean pickup, heading the other way. He's in the open field with a good stride going. He moves it on the fast break, and then the easy call as Pompo runs over. Turry. Under three minutes to go now in this third quarter. Behind the cage is Justin Turk. Up top they go to Colasso. Colasso, big left-handed shot. And Slick Nick lets one fly. And West Iceland will keep the ball here. Justin Turry. Over to Waybill, looking for the cutter. Ball bounces around, loose changes, picked up. Oh, big stop by the keeper, Galloway on the inside. Big hit there on the turnover. Caulfield coming up with it on the ride. Now to Justin Terry, who pulls it back out. And Jeremy Plotchko is down for West Genesee. He took a thunderous hit. Wildcat fans are not happy. They want to call. Looked pretty clean to me. With possession, it certainly wasn't from behind. It was just a big hit. It's a physical game. Caulfield playing all out, staying aggressive on the ride. Certainly, certainly hope he's all right. There he is. He turns right into maybe the stick was high. That, that's probably what has the fans upset. He went high with the stick. Can't really see if it was a cross check or not. Where the gloves are. That doesn't. That looks pretty clean to me. Good to see Plotchko jump back up there. But. Nah, on that angle, I'm sorry. I think I got to throw a flag <laughs> on that. Well, there you were able to see the separation between the hands on the stick. And he went first with the stick on a couple of those other replays. I thought it was all body. But when you when you have your hands separated like that and lead with the stick, that's what they're not happy about, especially when it's up that high. Good hustle, though, to get there. Nevertheless, Tenny Finnegan will bring it in play for West Islip. Finnegan, a senior mini. He drops off to Nicky Galasso. Here comes Galasso now. Galasso in all alone. Galasso up top. Oh, Galloway again. Galloway has made five or six biggies in this game. And now look at the aggressiveness by Galasso. A midfielder and goalie equipment starting the break. Here comes West Jenny now. Looking to move the ball. They do up top. Looking for a shot. They might have passed up a good one. Spinning around is Donahue. Donahue up and over the bar. Good patience, good ball movement. Galloway, though, coming up big on the other end to create the unsettled opportunity. He is doing his best to keep his team in it. It looked like it was going to be a great break for West Islip as a bad pass bounced right into the stick. They got off a great shot, but Galloway was there to go down and get it. Here's Ryan Barber now to Luke Cometti. 
Timmy Desco now. Desco with a big shot. He can really load it up. Desco behind the cage he goes. They swing it around now to Mazzoni. Mazzoni. Chased by Joe McCormick. They'll reset it with Luke Cometti. Under one go now in the third quarter. West Jenny would love to get one here. Going into the fourth. Cometti turns back. Frees up the right hand. Backhanded shot. No good. But the Wildcats back it up and will keep the ball. Chris Donahue now. Gives off to Ryan Barber. Up top they go driving the cages. Donahue, Brian Donahue put a save by DeCicio. Now DeCicio gives off. 25 seconds to go in his third quarter. DeCicio saw it all along. Read it right off the stick. Look at Flanagan. Look at the possession here on the stick of Flanagan. Finally drops off to Teddy Finnegan. They got to go to work. They only have 10 seconds. Final 10 seconds of the third quarter. Finnegan gets it to Galasso, and they just yell, go, Nicky, go. Here comes the fearless freshman trying to make something happen. Time for a one-timer, but it's knocked down by Galloway, and so will bring it in to the third quarter of this New York State Class A championship. 36 minutes in the books. West Islip, the Lions are 12 minutes away from keeping the title on Long Island, right here on MSG. More snow in the West as Utah gets hit with blizzard conditions. 18. You Adam, heck it up. I'm going to Utah. I'm going to use the points. Where does Canada's getting pounded? Yeah. Hey, I hear there's a huge storm in Japan. Norway. Come on, slow guy. I need to be able to travel where I want, when I want. That's why my card is... Do you doodle? Do you experiment with lettering on your desk? Do you spend more time drawing designs around your notes than actually taking notes? If this is you, then you could have a mind for design. Let Gibbs help you tap into your design potential. Get a rewarding career as a graphic designer. Design CD labels, posters, billboards, websites, and much more. Awesome careers are out there waiting for you. Call Gibbs now, 888-257-6601. That's 888-257-6601. What does it take to be the News 12 Connecticut Team of the Week? Everyday practice, hard work, sweat. Our camaraderie, sticking together. Blood. What do they need? Defense! The defense is very good. Not just defense. Hand-eye coordination. Our team chemistry. Pre-game rituals. What are they like? We're awesome. We're laid back. We're like a big family. We get along really well. We've all yelled at each other. We don't fight that often. <laughs> the News 12 Connecticut Team of the Week. See what it takes. Only on News 12 Connecticut. Sponsored in part by Carl Chevrolet Hummer of New Canaan. For someone who loves sports and entertainment, New York's the place to be. I promised my mom I'd never stop smiling. When I come to work, I'm in the zone. I love it. I like that MSG and why it follows the games, the access to all the teams in the area, given the storylines, why something matters. It's fun. We have access to so many different venues. When Sting and the police playing at the Garden, or the Sopranos walking the red carpet, you're going to get back behind the scenes. You get everything quick, right out of the gate, and you get it with a smile. Introducing MSG Originals, the inside stories as only MSG can tell them. History you never knew from the heroes who were there on the next MSG Originals. Madison Square Garden to me always was the mecca of boxing. Yeah, I'm 16 years old from Huntington, Long Island, and I'm sitting in Madison Square Garden with my knees be shaking. In all the fights in the world, I had one guy I had one to take, and that was mine. MSG Originals, the mecca of boxing, premieres this June on MSG. Fourth and final quarter here in this Pontiac Lax game of the week. West Islip with a four-goal lead. Good game here. We check in with our man on the scene. 250 miles away, Mike Quick is in Manhattan. Jim, what's up, bud? It's hard to believe there's only one more Arrow Post style Lax report. It comes up Tuesday night, 1030, right here on MSG. And what a show it will be. We'll have all three recaps of the New York State Championships. We'll have the championships from New Jersey and Connecticut, plus our first stick teams of the year. Now in Connecticut, we will feature Michael Banks, a young man from Brian McMahon High School whose life was headed in the wrong direction, and then he changed it like that. It's an unbelievable story about a young man who turned around a life 
that was definitely headed in the wrong direction. That's all Tuesday night, 1030, on the final Aeropostal Lax Report of the 2007 season. Happy birthday, Bobby Lawani, our producer. Back to you guys up in Syracuse. Yeah, here, here, Bob Lawani celebrating the birthday of the MSG primetime producer. And that Michael Banks story is one you don't want to miss from incarceration to a Division I lacrosse scholarship Tuesday night on the final Arrow Lax Report. Yeah. And we go to the fourth and final quarter of this Class A final. And Eamon, I think it's imperative. The next goal of this game has to go to West Genesee if they have any hopes of unseating West Islip as the champs. Well, you think back to a year ago, West Islip had a lead and West Jenny was able to get back in it and make it a one goal game. So we'll see if the Wildcats have another rally in them a year later. Ryan Barber to the interior. This pass not handled, but picked up. And they'll get another possession. Kometi goes up top to Timmy Desco. Desco to the senior midi. To the right, Desco in tight. Desco right into the stick of DeCicio. And Drew will get it clear. Ah, oh, but a good hit put on Derek Spezial. Now a loose ball goes back to West Genesee. Good hustle by Ryan Barber on the ride, coming up with the hit. But there, a great check by Flanagan, takes it right away. Ryan Flanagan, confident intimidator with a great stick, heading off to North Carolina. Six foot five, 215 pound pro to typical defender. Now, swooping the cage is Bradish. Bradish will turn it back. And slow it down. Now Galloway. And it winds up on the stick of Justin Turry. Turry to his right. Justin Turry. Justin Turry loses the ball, hits the ground, but good work on the ground ball by Wabel. Wabel's played a good game today. Now Vinny Galasso on the field all day with his younger brother, Nicky Galasso. But this time it's Ian Bradish. Here's Bradish now. He drops off to Waybill, and then it's number five, Nikki Galasso. Galasso now turns it back. The Galasso pulls the keeper out of his cage. Galloway very aggressive, looking to double and jump the ball. And West Islip taking a little time with them now as we're under 10 minutes. Here's Bradish now to his right. Bradish sprints back to his left. Nice and check. Good stick check there by Kevin Waddick. That's why you got to keep moving. You got to keep moving your feet. When you're a stationary target, you're easy for the defenseman. And here comes Galloway in the open field. Galloway all the way down into the offensive end. Now he's in trouble. Now he's in trouble. They didn't get open for him. And that, oh, he drew, draws the penalty. The hold on Turry. Oh, amazing. What a break for West Genesee. Once it became settled and you can guard him, you can shut down the other guys and he has no one to pass to. So now he's got to go one on one and Turry goes for the over the head hero check. Really no reason to just body up the goalie. Move your feet and just play position with them. But he goes for the check, takes the penalty. You'd expect a smarter play out of a senior. Galloway, no stranger to venturing into the defense of the opposition. West Genesee fans have come to see that from him. So here they go, Luke Cometti on the inside. That's a pass and a turnover, not a shot. Wow, big turnover here for the Wildcats of West Genesee. They tried to feed Desco right on the crease, couldn't make the connection. They passed by DeCicio and out of bounds. We are under nine minutes to go in the Class A New York State Final. And West Islip has had a solid day in holding West Genesee to only four goals. And they lead by four. All even, penalty over. Now coming down the other way, Anthony Monfredo. Here's Monfredo, the senior midi. Blue collar guy, does all the little things and a good job right there. Also coming off is Corey Clifford, the junior midi. What a solid shift. Here's Nikki Galasso now. Finds a pick behind. And here comes a flag on a slash. So penalty coming up, but a pass in front. Ball goes to the ground, and it'll be man up for West Islip. You heard that one all the way up here in the upper deck. 
And that was not the sound of stick hitting stick. Chris Orbitine will go off. Well, you're starting to get to the point of the game, Eamon. Where a goal by West Islip could really be the separation that salts this one away. Let's listen to it. Oh. Oh. I think that one knocked the wind out of me. So West Islip. Man up right now on West Jenny with a four goal lead in the Class A final. Under eight minutes to go. Now you see, here's the advantage of being a man up. You don't, you have to be patient. The defense, and as soon as I say that, they take a shot, of course. Good shot, Galloway makes the save, but the defense can't be aggressive. So you can be patient and work some clock. They're not gonna be able to put, put as much pressure on you with the ball as if they were even strength. So Terry and Nikki Galasso have switched positions on the field. It's Galasso running things up top now. Now Tyler Terry and Galasso. Galasso tries to get a pass off. Good stick work by the defense of Benny Waldron. Uh, here comes Nikki Galasso quickly. West Islip on the move once again. Back to Galasso. Cranks and fires, but a piece of it. It looked like either Jeremy Plotchko or Waldron got a stick on that one. Tyler Turry now will bring it in. West Islip, little pass here. Now here's Tyler Turry. This one off the stick at Caulfield. And a turnover, West Jenny will take possession. Caulfield couldn't handle the pass. Wildcats come up with the loose ball, and now they get the clear. Hawks go now. On the move, drops it off for Ryan Barber. Barber inside, got a man in front. And the ball is knocked around. Now the loose ball. The battle is on for the loose change. Picked up by Colin Donahue. Donahue comes out with it. Under seven minutes to go now. In New York's Class A final, Wes Jenny needs to get some goals up on the board in this one. Joe Pompo. Nice working. double by Galasso. Galasso and Tyler Terry with the double. Ball goes out of bounds, and it goes to West Islip. The freshman with the presence of mind caught down on the defensive end, knowing when to double. Amazing now, Nikki Galasso playing midfield. See, he gets stood up there, and then that's just a free double. The guy doesn't see you coming. They force the long ball, the loose ball. And then here, the tough pass, trying to thread the needle across the cage. They just can't make the connection off the shoulder pad. Offsides on the Lions, it'll go back to the Wildcats. Just over six minutes left for West Genesee to get back in this ball game. They need to start playing with a sense of urgency. And of course, they start need they need to start finishing some shots. There's Colin Donahue now. Donahue trying to be aggressive. Turns back on the inside, feels a double team. And he gets called for a ward. Warding off on Colin Donahue and another turnover. A great double by Joe McCormick, a great job by Flanagan standing him, standing him up. Look at Flanagan, the strength. He goes back to his right, he's got nothing. Here comes McCormick, and he tries to brush him off with his offhand, and that's an easy call. So West Islip now sees the clock go under six minutes. They have a four-goal lead. Now the Wildcats have to start being aggressive on defense. They can't sit back and be passive. They got to pressure the ball, they got to double the ball. They got to get the ball back. Absolute defensive clinic put on by West Islip today. Possession, defense, and goaltending, opportunistic goals, and they got a four goal lead with 5.20 to go. Five minutes separates them from repeating as New York State champs. There's a nice check on the hanger. Into the stick of John Galloway it goes. Now breaking out transition is Aaron Printup. Printup, you know he's going to be aggressive. The Bull Dodger going straight to the cage. Printup working his way inside. Ball comes off his stick. And here's a whistle. Going against the Wildcats on the hold. The West Islip players are starting to pump the fist. They know they're under five minutes away. They're starting to taste it. Here's Mike Finnegan now. Of West Islip. 
for Justin Turry. Justin Turry will be in no hurry as we come up on 4.30 to go in the fourth quarter. And Turry. You hear that? You hear the coaches saying, Shane, go for it. You got to go. You can't sit here and just run with them. You got to pressure him. I'm surprised no one's doubling him. You got to get the ball out of his stick. There comes the double. Finally, the double comes to Terry. Goes back to Caulfield. Look out here. Race for the ball. Caulfield will get there and keep it in. Quickly picks up the ground ball. Here's Caulfield now. You got to go double that. We are now under four minutes to go in the state final. Brian Caulfield has the ball knocked off his stick, but picks it back up. Goalie out of the cage, but they come up with it. So Wes Jenny does force the turnover. Oh, they get called for chesting the ball, it looks like. The West Genesee fans are not happy with the officials in the last few minutes here. And Mike Messer has got his hands up. He just can't believe the call. That's a tough one. That's a call you very rarely see. He's running through a double team. Look at Galloway, just ready to pounce, come out of the crease and double the ball. Here's Nicky Galasso now. 3.30 to go here in the fourth quarter. West Islip with a four-goal lead on the Pontiac Lacrosse Game of the Week. The state finals are right here and now and in the grasp of the Lions of West Islip. This pass goes awry up towards midfield. And off this turnover, West Jenny now will get another chance at a possession. Quickly, they put the ball into play. Brian Donahue, senior attacker, over to Ryan Barber. West Jenny's got to start going to the cage. Joe Pompo, they trail by four. Here's the future Great Dane, Pompo. He goes behind, Donahue. They swing it around to Barber. Barber trying to lower it up with the left, spins back to the right. Quick pass on the inside, tough angle shot, back of the net. And back they will go to Drew DeCicio. DeCicio up to Tyler Terry. We are under three minutes now, 220 and counting. Now Tyler Terry going to the goal. Terry, bouncer and a score. Put this one in the books, ladies and gentlemen. Tyler Terry makes it a five goal lead. He's going to Lafayette, but he's gonna go with a few state championship rings. His father Ralph is Coach Craig's best friend, and they're gonna celebrate on the ride back to Suffolk County. It's a 9-4 lead. We have 217 left in this one. Come on back, the Lions are up by five. Viewer discretion advised. The following message may trouble drivers insured with Allstate, State Farm, Geico, and other major insurance companies. We have reason to believe you are overpaying. Yes, overpaying by $349.88 a year on average. Stop overpaying. Call now for a rate quote from AIG Auto Insurance. 10 minutes is all it takes to learn if you're overpaying and by how much. Almost 2 million people have already saved money with AIG Auto Insurance. On average, they keep an extra $349.88 in their pockets. And they have the benefits of AIG Security Advantage, absolutely free. That includes free roadside assistance, free identity theft restoration services, and free emergency travel and medical assistance. Call and ask for a free rate quote today. Call now before you overpay a penny more. Call 1-800-511-1236. That's 1-800-511-1236. Or visit AIGauto.com. You've seen the moments. You know the names. Now, go beyond the walls of Madison Square Garden on MSG Profiles. I remember going on the bus and I just started crying. I put the cup in my car and just drove to the cemetery where my father was. We lived off pancakes for about two weeks when the food ran out. He was a guy that inspired me to play. Watch MSG Profiles for an intimate look at the stars, only on MSG. I'm Deb Coffin with an MSG Minute. 
trying to become the first Philly in 102 years to win the Belmont Stakes, rags to riches stumbled out of the gate. But jockey John Velasquez got her right, and Tom Durkin has the call. And at the top of the stretch, a Philly is in front of the Belmont, but Colin is right there with her. These two in a battle of the sexes in the Belmont Stakes. It is coming on the inside. Rags to riches on the outside. A desperate finish. Rags to riches and Colin. They're coming down to the wire. It's going to be very close. And it's going to be a Philly in the Belmont. Rags to riches has been. Curlin second, Tiago third, and after 28 Triple Crown starts without a win, trainer Todd Fletcher wins his first. John Velasquez had been over 28 in Triple Crown races. This has been an MSG Minute. 2.17 to go, and there's the black for the Class A state champions. It's dead ahead for the West Ice of Lions. They lead by five in this final. This game, of course, is brought to you in conjunction with the New York State Public High School Athletic Association, promoting sportsmanship and citizenship through interscholastic athletics since 1923. A look around the Tri-State on Championship Week for high school lacrosse. All kinds of teams going for the gusto. And look at this. Are you kidding me? The Lakers of Mountain Lakes shock the world. Del Porton's season comes to an end. The drive for six is stopped. Wow. Fairfield Prep with a victory 10-9 over Greenwich. Terry Ann wins it. And Weston also wins it in Connecticut. But look at that top on that score on top of the board, Amy. I'm shocked. You know what? We take a look at Scotty Craig. There's a national poll out there that had Huntington one, Del Barton two. West Islip, West Genesee, three and four. We're about to see the number one team in the country be crowned state champions and the best team in the country. Amazing. After all the frustration Scotty Craig and West Islip had, not being able to win a state championship coming into last year. Well, last year, they survived the county championship against Ward Melville. They beat West Genesee in the state final. And now look at them. They're going to win their second consecutive go back to back in New York State Class A. Oh man, tell Barton. Um, that is a uh, shocker. Jimmy, you were there earlier in the year when Mountain Lakes lost to Del Barton 7-1. Mountain Lakes got knocked off by Madison in the county tournament. That's that's the way you keep playing and keep fighting, even though Del Barton had won a thousand games in a row. I can't wait for the Arrow Post LX report now to see the highlights of that one. Wow. That's that, that one sending shockwaves all the way up here in Syracuse. Mountain Lakes breaks the string of five consecutive titles as they went for six. Here's a shot that DeCicio is right on. And they're drilling once again in Syracuse because Drew DeCicio has been a big part of the story today. 11 saves for the senior Albany bound goalkeeper. What a day he had. Unbelievable way to end your career. You wait so long to become a champ, to become a starter. And now you get to wrap it up as a champion and you go up against the team with the tradition and the power of West Genesee and you play one of the best games you'll ever play in your career. And it was just a year ago that these two teams met in the finals. West Islip had never won a state championship. West Genesee came in winning the previous four. What would happen in this one? Tell us, Eamon. It was the drive for five, but Brian Caulfield says it's our time. Back it in. We've seen it all day today. There he does it. And then Ben Arikian gets the goal. West Islip had the lead. They hold on. And Coach Scotty <laughs> Craig loves to take the shower. June 10, 2006, a day he will never forget as he wins the championship. He gets the monkey off his back, and now he's about to make it back to back, and that legitimizes your program. It says that last year was not a flash in the pan. Not only are we one of the best teams on S Suffolk County, not only are we one of the best teams on Long Island, we are the best team in New York State, and as I mentioned, you could make a claim that right now West Islip with this victory in this championship and the other two huge losses this week to Huntington and Del Barton is the best team in the country. And what a day once again.
And you know, this is such a close program. You take a look at the legs of some of these players and you see the initial CG. You see it on the helmets, the Galassos. Five, brother, five sons, five brothers have played for this team. Vinny and Nick in the, in the field today playing so well. There you see it, CG. A few years ago, their mother, Cindy Galasso, passed away. She lost a battle to cancer. And she was really the mother of the program because all of her sons played. Everyone on the team would hang out at her house. So it was a loss that the community is still reeling from, someone that the whole lacrosse community loved. And obviously, she is still a part of their memories and in their minds. And they always think of her. And this will be a special moment for the Galasso family to celebrate another state championship. And Vinny's final day, day as a Lion, and it's not just the Galasso boys that wear the CG on their leg, it's all the Lions. And West Islip sideline right now, just ready to explode. And the bucket watch is on for the former Lion, the 72 graduate, Scotty Craig. Just keep your eye on the big fella. You talked about it, Jimmy, having to climb that mountain. Ward Melville, one of the greatest dynasties in the history of the sport. You finally get by them, then you got to go up against West Genesee, and we've detailed all that Mike Messer and that program has done. And now you're on that level two years in a row. Sweet, sweet, sweet moments for West Iceland. Final seconds tick away. They have repeated in Class A, the Lions of West Iceland reign supreme over the Empire State in Class A. It is a back-to-back -back championship for West Islip and their head coach, Scott Craig. Just a wire-to-wire -wire performance, Eamon. They trail 2-1, they rip off five straight goals, and from there, they manage the lead. Uh, they never let West Genesee get the momentum, uh, get the fire in this game that they needed to take any control. And a sea of lion helmets and sticks and gloves is what you want to see because that means they're celebrating. But really a complete victory all around for West Iceland. They were stronger in every facet of the game. At the midfield, at the faceoffs, the attack, Brian Caulfield and Nicky Galasso were just dominant. And then the defense, so active. And of course, when they got past the defense, Drew DeCicio was there to make so many big saves after big saves. When you hold West Genesee to four goals, that is a strong effort by the defense and by the goalie. And they were just dominant in every phase of the game. Well, of course, you look at number 44. He is absolutely worthy of the title Warrior of the Game. Drew D, they were drilling from the word go for good reason. Look at this. He sees it right away. He moves the stick and stops the high to high shot. He was active all day long. West Genesee only beat him four times. 11 saves on the day, and some of them were of the spectacular and unusual variety. Drew, you got to love it as DeCicio and West Islip take down the epitome of high school across West Genesee. How about that one for the 72 grad, Scotty Craig. His Lions roar in the state final. Come on back. The post game is straight ahead on the Pontiac Game of the Week. The Negotiator's having a summer flight sale. So through July 4th, he's cut prices on every single flight at Priceline.com. Just choose your exact flight and save over other travel sites. Proving once again that no one deals like we do. Priceline. On the next WWE Presents MSG Classics, it's 1988. Randy Savage battles Andre the Giant for the WWE Championship. In 1980, a Texas death match between Ken Patera and Bob Backlund. Don't miss the classics. Wednesday at 8 on MSG. Here comes New York, trying to go coast to coast. Gets it to go. What a play by the Liberty. You can accept me. You can accept me. You can accept me. Beautiful basketball. Like lightning. It is the building that helped build a city, and we are the muscle that helped build the garden. The wait is over as WWE presents MSG Classics, a weekly series hosted by Mean Gene Okerlund, where we relive the greatest WWE moments at MSG. From Bruno Sammartino to The Undertaker, 
From a building to a shrine. WWE presents Madison Square Garden Classics, Wednesdays at 8 on MSG. Here's your final score on the Pontiac High School Last Game of the Week presented by Warrior. West Islip defends their title and wins it again. The presenting sponsor of the Lacrosse Game of the Week is Warrior. Warrior Lacrosse, revolutionizing the game through equipment, technology, and innovation since 1992. Warrior Lacrosse, the means to dominate. And Eamon McEnany, one final time here before we close it out and talking about dominating. Not too often you see West Genesee take one on the chin like that in a game like this. Jimmy, let's put it in perspective. Coming into this game, West Genesee had lost in the state championship game five times. All five were by one goal. So for West Islip to come up here to Wildcat territory and dominate and win it 9-4, that just, it, it's historic. It's an historic win for West Islip and it's a historic win for New York State Lacrosse. And you know, if we had a poll on MSG, West Islip would be the number one team. Scott Craig told me of his keeper, Drew DeCicio, at the beginning of the year. It's his time now, and boy, is it his time. Maggie Gray, our warrior of the game. I'm standing here with Drew DeCicio, our warrior of the game. Congratulations, 11 saves. Talk about what it's been like to be a part of this fantastic defense all season long. It has just been thrilling, you know, because my defense is just solid all around. And I knew that coming into the playoffs that they were going to really step up their game and not give the other team any opportunities. You were part of this team last year. Of course, you were the backup this year. You get the starting nod. You hear everyone chanting your name. You have the game of your life in the state championship game. What is that like? It's just great. You know, these are things you dream about as a high school kid. You know, this is what it's all about, winning the state championship with your best friends. Guys, he'll be a great day next year. Scotty Marr is going to get his hands on it. But for now, he's our warrior of the game. Drew DeCicio, back to you. All right, Maggie, thanks a lot. Looking good in that warrior cap, Drew DeCicio. What a day as he set the tone for the Lions as they get it done. Once again, our final score was 9 for West Islip. Today's game was produced by Bob Luani, directed by Tommy Meberg. Our associate director was Larry Gaines, and our graphics coordinator was Will Sanchez and Stevie Daly. We'd also like to thank our outstanding technical crew for the, all the great work they've done all season long. Hey, everything you want to need to know about our tri-state lacrosse scene is covered by the man, Mike Quick. Watch the Arrow Pulse Style Lax Report every Tuesday night at 10.30 on MSG. You know we've got more exciting high school lacrosse action coming your way. Next, it's the Boys B Championship on the Pontiac Lax Game of the Week presented by Warrior. That's coming up next on MSG. Thanks for tuning in to high school lacrosse all season on MSG. For Maggie Gray and Eamon McEnany, I'm Jimmy Cavallo. All hail the West Islip Lions. They go back to back and reign supreme over the Empire State. We'll see you next year.